The Alone in the Dark franchise has a complicated past. All the way back in 1992, it threw open the door for the survival horror genre, and without it, we may never have had the likes of Resident Evil or Silent Hill. But since then, there's probably been more lows than highs. Don't get me wrong, I love New Nightmare, and I even have a bit of a soft spot for the overly ambitious 2008 reboot. But that, coupled with 2015's truly abysmal Alone in the Dark Illumination, haven't done much to keep the series relevant for a long, long time. At least we can all agree that Uwe Boll's film adaptation was absolutely perfect, and anyone who says differently can take it up with him in the ring. Anywho, will this 2024 reimagining of the original game kickstart things in the right direction for the franchise? Taking things back to the early 20th century, the story follows Emily Hartwood with the help of private investigator Edward Carnby arriving at DeSetto Manor, now a psychiatric hospital, after discovering that her uncle Jeremy has gone missing. As you can imagine with such a setting, it's not long before you encounter monsters, arcane conspiracies, and portals to hidden dream worlds. You know, the usual. But will it live up to the heady heights of the series, or will it prove to be its final coffin nail? Watch on to find out. So, in a similar vein to other recent survival horror remakes, the gameplay has been completely rebuilt for modern sensibilities. Gone are the fixed camera angles, making way for third-person, over-the-shoulder perspective. But they definitely haven't done away with all of that old-school charm, believe me. I'll explain more in a bit. While you explore the manor building, things are a little slower and methodical. There's a lot of puzzles to figure out and residents to interact with, all of which helps to slowly piece together the story. To be honest, when I saw those first gameplay trailers, I was a little worried it was going to fall into the walking simulator category. But after getting hands-on, trust me, it's so much more. Sidebar, there's actually some genuinely really good games that get called walking sims. Definitely check out Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. The puzzles are challenging, and the characters really do breathe life into this dusty old haunted house. In a way, the DeSetto Manor kind of feels like a big puzzle box. I mean in the way you gradually unlock more rooms and go deeper into its mysteries. Depending on how much of a challenge you want, not only can you adjust the difficulty, but also choose between modern and old school mode. Modern gives you a host of helpful features, including more interactive maps and easier to follow objectives. Old school mode does away with all of this, meaning you'll really have to get into the weeds and hope you don't miss that one clue you walked past half an hour ago. Honestly, let me know if you beat it this way, that is really impressive. But exploring the halls of DeSetto Manor is only part of the Alone in the Dark experience. You'll also jump in and out of this liminal dream world that'll take you to all manner of horrible places, from an abandoned oil rig to the French quarter, now riddled with nasty ghoulies. And I'm really in the mood for nasty ghoulies, believe me. These areas tend to be a lot more action-packed, meaning you can really sink your teeth into the combat systems. After recently playing the Resident Evil 2 remake, I was surprised at just how much combat there was here. You all have access to guns, and while ammo isn't quite as scarce as it is in Resident Evil, some enemies will still soak up bullets like crazy before they go down, particularly on the harder difficulties. Fortunately, you'll also be able to find some throwable explosives and some chonky-looking melee weapons to keep the baddies at bay. I was genuinely pretty impressed with the depth and variety of the action, and while I enjoyed the moments in the manor, I think it's these dream world sequences that will really stick in my memory. They were really a lot of fun. So when you start the game, you get to pick whether or not you want to play through things as Edward or Emily. Or should I say, you get to pick whether you want to play through things as Edward or Emily first. That's because who you pick affects how characters and things interact and occur for you. While it will be similar, you're experiencing the same thing from two different perspectives. There's enough difference to avoid the second playthrough feeling repetitive. Expect different cutscenes and some completely different levels. And I'm not saying that doing both playthroughs doesn't get you a new ending, but I'm also not saying that doing both playthroughs doesn't get you a new ending. I think that makes sense. Each playthrough takes roughly 8 hours, so you'd be looking at about 16 to 20 hours for a completionist run. And speaking of the story and the general mood of the game, they bloody nailed it. I'm an absolute sucker for the dark, gothic Americano vibe. The setting, dark jazz soundtrack, and Lovecraftian influences all tickled my brain in just the right way. I'm not sure how much material there is in the eldritch crime noir genre, but I want to read, watch, and play it all. Seriously, send me all of your recommendations. Also, while the game uses the original title and its sequels as a base, it tells a unique story that doesn't require any previous experience or exposure to the series, so don't be afraid about jumping in with this entry. As you can probably 
probably tell by the gameplay, Edward and Emily are both voiced and performed by David Harbour and Jodie Comer respectively. While they obviously put in great performances, I think this is where I found my biggest issue with Alone in the Dark, and it could very well just be a me thing. It's just that whenever an actor's face is used as a model in a game, I can't help but just think of the actor, rather than the character they're portraying. I think because it's still a bit of a novelty seeing someone as a 3D computer person, I find it hard not to just think, oh, yep, there's that actor in that game. I don't know. This, coupled with some L.A. Noir-esque Uncanny Valley, did stop me getting as invested as I might have otherwise. But this is more personal preference than any over issue. But aside from that, I had a really good time with Alone in the Dark. Mechanically and technically, it might not do anything we haven't seen before, but it's got a mood and an atmosphere all of its own. It's absolutely a return to form for the franchise, and whether it leads to a bigger revival or ends the series as a cult classic, it's definitely one you should check out. But what did you think of Alone in the Dark? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to read your thoughts. And while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe for plenty more on all things gaming, or you can always visit UpsideDownShark.com to keep up with everything else we've got going on. Until then, my name is Tom, this has been UDS, and we'll see you next time.